in your face, all over the place. We're online 24 7. 24 7. You're listening to the hottest internet station. You're listening to Gonzo Radio, home of Dr. Gonzo and Tim in the Afternoon. All music station, Gonzo Radio Pequa.com. And I'm here with John Anderson, the lead singer from the band Yes, who recently have been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. John, what are your thoughts on that, finally making it there? Well, it's better late than never. That's what I say. I'm very, very happy. And John, um, what, was, what was part of the journey there? What, what are some of your uh, early influences as uh, when Yes first formed? What made you want to be a, a singer and a musician? Well, just the idea of being a musician is amazing in this life. And over the years, you know, you you keep going with your music. You're always doing something new. And eventually, 40, 50 years past, you can't believe you're still a musician. Oh, yeah. And a lot of your peeps out there, let me uh, tell you, we we had prayed for you. You had some health struggles in the past. And we're glad you're uh, you're over those. And uh, you're back out on the road. Um, as well with uh, uh, Trevor Rabin and Rick Wakeman. Yeah, yeah, we're we're definitely having a good time together. We just did a USA tour before Christmas, and uh, next week, like you said, we're going to Israel and uh, Europe and the Far East. And, you know, we have a good time together. These are great musicians that I'm working with, so I'm a very happy happy camper. Uh, John, let me ask you, um, the Yes Tree, the family tree, is many branches, many branches. Actually, I grew up with the original Yes, and my two sons, Alan and Stephen, grew up with Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, and Howe dancing around the room uh, to Tiqua. Do you think Yes has found a new audience out there, especially with, with the uh, incredible break in, uh, in the 1980s with Owner of a Lonely Heart? Well, you know, you go through your period of making music where you're just making music. You don't think about having a hit record. Um, I was thinking about this this morning that I'm very, very lucky to be in music, in a situation with musicians where we don't think about having a hit record. We think about what the next music adventure is. So when you look back over the years, you know, you realize that young people will eventually find uh, what I do. They will eventually find what I did with Yes, what I did with Van Gelis, what I did with uh, Rick Wakeman, and now with Trevor. It's a never-ending cycle of music, so you don't worry too much about being top of the tree of whatever it is of being famous, whatever. You're just very excited to make music, and that's the best thing. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, we I love your voice, and uh, these days with uh, you, the world climate, the political climate, it's so wonderful to hear a positive, beautiful voice out there still singing the songs after all these years. Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm sing, I was singing this morning. I'm singing, I'm singing every day about what we're doing, why we're doing it, what's going on around us. And now, I've always been of the mindset, John, that going on a cruise is a good thing. Well, actually, when you went on a cruise, as of late, uh, Invention of Knowledge came as a result of that. Would, would you like to talk a little bit about that? Well, I was asked to go on this cruise uh, from uh, Miami to ba- Bahamas, and it's a sort of, um, it's really one of those things. It's like a cruise of uh, progressive music, pro rock, if you want to call it anything. And I just thought, well, wouldn't it be great just to, just to go on tour on a boat? So I just went with my guitar, and I was doing my solo shows, and that's all I was really interested in. I was just happy to do a solo sort of tour uh, on a boat. And then I met all these musicians. And of course, there's a band called Transatlantic. And uh, they were wonderful people. And uh, they wanted to do some Yes songs, uh, like a celebration of Yes songs on the boat. So I said, OK, let's do this and that. So we rehearsed a couple of times. And uh, I met Ronya uh, Stolt, uh, the guitar player. And we, we really got on very well, actually. and. Uh, you know, you meet people, you just think, gosh, I can work with him very easily. You know, it'd be a lot of fun. That's basically what I did. Uh, I got together with him. I sent him some songs about six months later. 
and over a year and a half, we actually made the album without meeting each other again for two years. So we we meet on the internet, and that was it. Oh, you gotta love technology on something like that for sure. Uh, I tell you, my favorite cut on that is "Everybody Heals," and I believe it, I think it's hard to put John Anderson in a box. This is just my opinion because the box is never big enough. Um, and we could call it progressive rock, or we could just call it beautiful music uh, for such a time as this. Yeah, I think whichever way you look at it, music is more important than making money. You start making music for the fun of it, and then you want to be a star, of course. You want to be a rock star, you know, but when you think about it, the music is more important to every time. And people would ask me, well, what is yes music? And I say, well, yes, music is in itself is just uh, an adventure. The musical adventure of yes is now ginormous, it's like you said at the beginning. There's so many different people being in the group of yes, and uh, you know, ARW really is yes, but we we don't use the name because there's already a band out there with Steve and Alan and those guys, so I, we don't want to confuse anybody. So we are ARW, but we're still making yes music. And it's like 50 years next year. I can't believe it. Chris will be, and I kind of laugh never think of Chris. He's such a beautiful, beautiful, crazy guy. We were the yin and yang of the band. We started the band in 68, and here we are next year, 50 years later. And he's up in the spirit world having a fun time. And he actually comes to our concerts quite a lot. He'll be there at the uh, Hall of Fame, that's for sure. What other members uh, plan to be in attendance? Well, I know Steve and Alan and Bill Bluford, they'll be there. Because it's only the people that are inducted from the original Yes. Obviously, Rick and Trevor, you know, they were part of Yes for a long time. That's the, the, those are the main people of Yes, you know. And I know that when I, when I made the album Invention of Knowledge uh, with Ramya, I would say to him, you know, we're going to make a beautiful Yes piece of music as though we are in Yes because I never left Yes, as it happens. So Yes, music is sort of in my DNA. Well, and on Invention and Knowledge, what I noticed, John, is I've listened to Yes music all my life as a musician, and you had nice little surprises around each corner of a crescendo or, or whatever, and it was just, a, it's a very beautiful recording. Thank you. Well, that's more, more to do with Ronya, because he, he was in a band uh, called the Flower Kings in the 80s, and they were sort of a, a hybrid of yes music. They loved yes music. So what I did was to send him songs and say, you just do what you want musically, and uh, we'll just put all these songs together. And during the course of, as I said, it was a year and a half, we were working together on and off, because I'd be on tour, and he'd be on tour doing other stuff. But whenever we got together, we'd listen to what we'd done, and realized that it wasn't a series of uh, a song, song, song. It's, it's like a, a symphonic overture of music and songs and music. And like you say, you can listen to that, that album over and over and find things about it all the time, as I do. I just wanted to add to that, uh, encourage people to go check that album out. And of course, it's on... Uh, a it can be reached through te our technology. People don't buy records, but uh, I don't know, maybe it'll make a comeback on a, on a, any plans for any kind of vinyl, John, at all? Actually, they're just releasing a vinyl um, uh, next month because they, they just sent me a new uh, print uh, and it sounded just so beautiful. And they're going to release some vinyl copies uh, over the next month. You know, people can... Go to Amazon and find it. And uh, like anything, you can buy a bottle of ketchup on Amazon. You can, you can go oh, some, yeah. <laughs> buy some great music. Yeah. And uh, not only that, uh, it's interesting, your fan base now. I've, I've been to a couple of uh, Yes concerts as of late, well, past five years or so. And you have mom, dad, and the kids. And I had a bunch of young people in the studio here. And I, I played, I've seen all good people. And it was a yes double play. So after that, I had Owner of a Lonely Heart. And they go, I love that band. But they had no idea that it was the same band. Oh, that's true. The interesting thing about yes, if you listen to the very early music, we were just a straightforward sort of stage rock and roll band. We did Beatles songs. We did uh, Richie Haven songs. 
we did other people's songs because I was learning to write songs myself. So when you listen to those early BBC tapes, the, the band was so rocking. It was really a great rock and roll band. And as time went along, he, he started working with Steve Howe, who was a trained classical guitar player, and same with Rick, they were trained classical musicians. You start to spread your musical wings together and create Close to the Edge and uh, Awaken. And uh, a lot of young people will go on this beautiful adventure of discovering what Yes Music truly is. It, it, isn't, uh, it isn't a pop band, that's for sure. No, that's for sure. And, and Yes is always known for its beautiful staging. I still remember uh, the Relayer tour, uh, Feline Fields. I'm originally from Phoenix. Feline Fields out there with the Roger Dean creature feature up over your heads. Beautiful shows, always reinventing uh, your stage as well. So they're always going to see something new at a Yes concert. Oh, yeah. An interesting thing, I think, was uh, somebody sent me a book of all that uh, uh, staging being uh, designed. And it's a book about how it was done by Roger and his brother. You know, it was quite amazing to see everything working at the, in, in the moment, you know, it was very, way before uh, virtual reality, you know, it was like, it was, it was like 3D, live 3D, sort of pure 3D staging, which was uh, quite amazing stuff. And of course, it was a, an incredible time for the band. We, we'd been going then nearly 10 years and we were feeling really good about being able to keep going. And uh, I, re I remember in particularly uh, the percussion break during Ritual, it it was just, you hit it out of the park for sure.
I was going, well, you know, it's so strange what I had. I had, I had, I had uh, some symbols that I jumped on to make them very, very bent up and, and make them like a cracking noise. And I also had, uh, what do they call the slinkies? Even the slinkies that you could just put on top of some stairs and it would come all the way down the stairs. What we would do is hang them up, stretch them, and put a little microphone on and we'd get thunder and lightning out of them. Now, you're very percussion friendly. I, I had forgotten that you uh, sang backup vocals on Stop Loving You with Toto, a very, really cool little scat section in, in the bridge. And you're, you're very uh, tuned into what Jeff Becerra was playing. Yeah, yeah, I, I just enjoy getting up there and having a crazy, wonderful time on stage. I still do. That's great, John. Hey, well, John Anderson of Yes, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us and Tim in the Morning. I hope you have safe travels and my best to you and your family. To all the Yes fans out there, make sure you're tuned into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony where Yes will finally be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's about bloody time. Thanks, John. Hey, my best to your family. Uh, continued prayers uh, for your safe travels in the future. Um, my best to all your bandmates. And uh, don't forget to tell Rick Wakeman to make sure he eats plenty of spam before he goes on stage. Oh, yeah. You know what his new joke is? What, what is that? People who live in Dubai, they never watch the Flintstones. But people who live in Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> <laughs>